All who are thirsty, come to the waters, says the Lord. Though you have no money, come and drink with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today is Tuesday, March 24th, in the year of our Lord, 2020, and we celebrate Tuesday in the fourth week of Lent. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Reverend Francis Bober. My friends, as we prepare ourselves now to encounter our risen Lord, let us first call to mind our sins and ask our loving Lord for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the venerable exercises of holy devotion shape the hearts of your faithful, O Lord, to welcome worthily the paschal mystery and proclaim the praises of your salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me, Ezekiel, back to the entrance of the temple of the Lord, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple was toward the east. The water flowed down from the right side of the temple, south, of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the right side. Then, when he had walked off to the east with a measuring cord in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and had me wade through the water which was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand, and once more he made me wade through the water, which was now knee deep. Again, he measured off a thousand and had me wade. The water was up to my waist. Once more he measured off a thousand, but there was now a river through which I could not wade. For the water had risen so high, it had become a river that could not be crossed except by swimming. He asked me, Have you seen this, son of man? Then he brought me to the bank of the river, where he had me sit. Along the bank of the river, I saw very many trees on both sides. He said to me, this water flows into the eastern district down upon the Arabah and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit. 
for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. God is our refuge and our strength, and ever-present help in distress. Therefore we fear not, though the earth be shaken, and mountains plunge into the depths of the sea. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. There is a stream whose runlets gladden the city of God, the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in its midst. It shall not be disturbed. God will help it at the break of dawn. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. Come, behold the deeds of the Lord, the astounding things he has wrought on earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. Our stronghold is the God of Jacob. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem at the Sheep Gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos. In these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat, and walked. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who was cured, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. He answered them, The man who made me well told me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who told you, Take it up and walk? The man who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped away since there was a crowd there. After this, Jesus found him in the temple area and said to him, Look, you are well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went and told the Jews that Jesus was the one who made him well. Therefore, the Jews began to persecute Jesus because he did this on a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, we have a lot of powerful imagery here today in our readings. And just before I came over to the church this morning to prepare for Holy Mass, I happened to check the Johns Hopkins website, their coronavirus website, which is keeping a real-time count of the number of cases worldwide and in each of the individual countries. Sadly, uh, we are almost to 400,000 cases now around the world. 
and it is growing exponentially. And even here in the United States, uh, we are now have the third most cases reported uh, around the world, whereas a few days ago we were much further down the list. I think that for many of us, it can give us almost a sense of being like the man at the pool of Bethesda, a sense of almost being paralyzed. It seems like each day more and more is being asked of us in order to help prevent and eliminate the spread of this virus among ourselves and most especially among those who are most vulnerable, our elderly, those with immune system diseases, those with lung problems, those who are undergoing treatments for other kinds of illnesses. There's almost a kind of a sense of paralysis that can set in in our minds and our emotions and our psychology because we're so used to being active. We're Americans. We like to be on the go. We like to be doing. We like to be moving. And so when we're asked to do things like work from home, when we're asked to do things to, uh, you know, to be home with our children who are home from school, when we're asked to not go out into public places, uh, when we're asked to close and shutter our businesses and things like this, well then, in many ways, we can feel very much like that man at the side of the pool. Kind of a sense of paralysis can set in. But what we have to want to be careful about, though, is not allowing the activities that are going on around us, as prudent as they are, we mustn't allow them uh, to allow uh, any sort of spiritual paralysis, we might say, from setting in in our minds, our hearts, and our souls. This imagery today that God so lovingly gives us, I think is, is so powerful. First of all, in our first reading today, we hear about these powerful waters that start as a trickle at the temple and this vision that Ezekiel is given these waters which are, are life-giving, that are nourishing. And in fact, the very end, they, they are nourishing the trees that provide food and their leaves for medicine. Yes, we pray, Lord Jesus, we pray. We pray for the medicine, the therapeutics, the vaccines, the cures, Lord. We, we are praying constantly that you may grace us and bless us with the medicines to bring an end to this virus that is plaguing the world. So yes, medicine and, and having that desire and the need and wanting these cures and therapeutics is so important. So we, we pray for them uh, in faith. But there's another reality too that's so very important that the Lord reminds us of. You know, when we look at the last two days from our, our gospel readings, these encounters that Jesus has yesterday with the Roman official whose son was dying and he goes out of his way to travel a long distance. He knows who Jesus is and he asks Jesus to, to heal his son and he comes home and he finds out that his son was healed and he asks, well, what time did that happen? And he was able to correlate that time with the time that he was with Jesus and he comes to faith. He comes to faith. And then today we have this person, this character, this, this man who is paralyzed with the water and quite frankly, I, I don't find him to be that lovable. <laughs> I don't find him to be, you know, at first when Jesus approaches him and Jesus knows, right? This is one of the ways, again, Jesus is revealing himself that he is God because he knows the man's plight. He knows the man's situation. He knows that he's been ill for 38 years. And he asks the man, well, do you want to be well? And the man, instead of saying, yeah, right off the bat, yeah, I want to be well, he blames others for his plight. He blames others for the circumstances in which he finds himself. And then when he is healed, and the guy, and that guy goes on and, the, and he's asked, well, who, who did this to you? Who, who told you to take up your mat and walk and all of this? He's like, well, I, I don't have a clue. I, I don't know. I don't know who did this. I have no idea who the man was. And then after he encounters Jesus again, recognizing that Jesus heals him, what does he do? He goes and tattletells. 
<laughs> he goes to the officials and says, well, this is the guy. This is the guy who did it. This is the guy who did it. I don't know. I, I just don't find, when you compare the two characters, right, there's, there's, there's quite a difference. One is brought to faith and, and the other really isn't. And Jesus tells them, he says, look, you are well. Do not sin anymore. My friends, I think in this time in which we are so focused on our physical health and well-being and so many others around us, our family, our friends, our neighbors, and our communities, and rightly so, and we're putting all these efforts, all these efforts into preventing the plague of this virus, Jesus is reminding us today as we're continuing our Lenten journey, there's, there's a plague, there's a pandemic that's a, a lot more dangerous, and that's the plague of sin in our world. And he's reminding us really today, what are the efforts that we take to really be mindful in the care of our souls? You know, I, I'm hopeful and I know more and more are hopeful that this period of time when we're at home and hopefully increasing our time of prayer, hopefully examining our lives, examining our consciences, growing in prayer to closer to our Lord, that we're gonna come out of this with a, a more, shall we say, urgent sense of the need for the care of our souls, especially the virtue of penance. St. Thomas Aquinas talks about the, the virtue of penance, not just being going to the sacrament of reconciliation and seeking God's mercy and forgiveness and his healing, which he freely gives to us out of his love and compassion for us, but it's almost kind of a state of mind. It's a state of being as Christians that we're always recognizing as we go through our lives and our daily activities, really um, all of our faults and our weaknesses and, and really being mindful and conscious of those things that really the destiny, the eternal destiny and salvation of our soul is the thing that we should have and hold in the highest value. Yes, we value our life on earth, no doubt. It is a gift that God gives to us. But do we place that as a higher value than the, than the value of our immortal souls? This is a very important reality that Jesus will continue to unveil and, and, re, and reveal to us during the days of, ahead. So let us today, let us certainly continue to lift up in our prayers uh, all those who are sick and suffering, especially for the virus, we continue to lift up in our prayers those who are on the front lines in our hospitals and, and health care organizations who are treating the sick and the suffering. We continue to lift up in prayers those families who are separated and apart from their loved ones who are in hospitals and, and who are in quarantine. Yes, we do all of those things. But our Lord is also asking us, to be mindful of during this period of time, to recognize and to really value the greatest gift that we have, that is our immortal soul, so that when we come out of this, that we will have a greater sensitivity and awareness of the damage that sin does to our soul, the paralysis that it brings to our individual lives and our social life together, and that we will work together just as hard as we're working together now to end this plague and pandemic, that we will continue to work just as hard after this ends to help bring healing and mercy to God's world. May God bless you. Amen. My friends, recognizing the importance of our immortal souls and the damage that sin does, but the free offering of God's gift of mercy and healing and reconciliation, we offer these our prayers and petitions. We pray for the ministers of the altar that as they channel the life-giving waters of the sacraments into our hearts, they themselves may be refreshed and healed by their contact with this saving stream. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace, that the salt sea of embittered nations and peoples may be sweetened and made fresh by God's grace and the loving forgiveness of Christian hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that the free-flowing presence of grace in our lives may be the cause of our growth and thanksgiving at all times, but especially during this holy season of Lent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and those paralyzed by addiction and poverty and sin, who await for a helping hand, that in the person of his followers, Jesus may again show the mastery of his loving power in their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our caregivers, our nurses, doctors, all those who are helping those who are suffering from this virus. We pray for those families who are separated for their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray that our beloved dead, especially Father Bober, for whom this Mass is being offered, may be freed from any impurity that still clings to them, and may be ready to appear with joy before the face of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those intentions that we bring to this Mass and that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we entrust these, our prayers and petitions, to the maternal care and intercession of our Blessed Mother Mary, as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we ask these in all graces, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer to you, O Lord, these gifts which you yourself have bestowed. May they attest to your care as creator, for this is our mortal life, and effect in us the healing that brings us immortality. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. 
and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Corpus Christi. Our communion antiphon. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Purify our minds, O Lord, we pray, and renew them with this heavenly sacrament, that we may find help for our bodies now, and likewise in times to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before the final blessing, just a couple of reminders. First, uh, during our holy hour uh, at noon, uh, we are lifting up in prayer uh, those who are working in the hospitals and in our medical facilities, um, and those who are sick, and also those families who are separated from their loved ones. Uh, on our Facebook page uh, at OLSS Official, uh, there is an online form. You just can fill in, no last names needed, you just can uh, uh, click on it and fill in the names of those you would like to have us lift up in prayer today. Those who are in need of help physically and also those who are in need of help spiritually to stay strong during this time of need and distress. And also, uh, I will be, uh, again, following our Lord's lead, reminding us that the, the health of our souls uh, is even more important than our physical health. 
um, I will be uh, announcing in a couple of days how we'll be able to do the Sacrament of Reconciliation here uh, this weekend. So stay tuned. We'll be able to announce it on our Facebook page and also I'll send out a flock note. Uh, but we're looking to uh, set up uh, some sort of confession opportunity in a way that's safe uh, for you and safe for me as well. So stay tuned to that. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, O merciful God, that your people may remain always devoted to you and may constantly receive from your kindness whatever is for their good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. And we'll conclude by praying the prayer by Pope Francis to Mary during this pandemic. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. May you have a beautiful and blessed day. God bless you.